Hey, before we get started today, I want to talk about some bad actors in our industry right now that are trying to sell fear. Uh, the annuity salesman is who I'm talking about. They're using fear of the past election, fear for market volatility, fear about losing money forever. And it's all uh, to sell you a product that pays them the most money. We have done the math on these annuities. They don't make sense, especially the index annuities. You need to stay away. I have a white paper we've created just for you. If you've been pitched to annuity or if you have an annuity, go to our website, wiserinvestor.com. Scroll down to the bottom. We have a buyer beware. Why do they keep trying to sell you that annuity white paper? Enter your email. You'll get emailed the white paper and you can learn more about this vicious process that these uh, bad actors are doing uh, in our industry. Stay away from them. Always look for a fee-only advisor, people working in your best interest at all times, fiduciaries. That's wiserinvestor.com. Scroll to the bottom. Subscribe to receive our white paper on why the annuity is a bad deal for you. Welcome to the Wiser Wealth Management Roundtable, where we believe the best financial advice should always be conflict-free. I'm your host, Casey Smith. Guiding you to financial freedom are my co-hosts, Brad Lyons and Matthews Barnett. Hey, guys. Hi, Casey. How's it going? Uh, today's topic is, with these low interest rates, do we still try to pay off our homes? Um, for those of us, or for those listening that know us, uh we are very big proponents on having no mortgage uh, in retirement. Uh, in fact, uh, we lose, uh, I don't say we lose, our clients gain <laughs> mortgage, mortgage-free uh, every year to the tone of uh, millions of dollars if you add it all up um, over, the last, over the last 12 months and our, our suggestions. You know, but we're, we're in this uh, rate environment now where we're getting um, – uh, I think I've heard of a 1.9% 15-year. You have to buy down to that. Uh, 2.25 15 years, probably more more normal. Uh, 2.9, 2.75, uh, 30-year mortgage. So the question is, you know, the stock market's running hot. Uh, mortgage rates are really low. So why should I pay off my home? Um, and I, I think it comes down to several scenarios, Um you know, let's let's just talk about why we should pay off our home first. Well, you know, there's lots of reasons that someone might want to consider paying off their home. If they can have the foresight to see out into the future and, and decide, you know what, when I get to that point where I'm in retirement, I want to have as much financial freedom as possible. And one way to do that is to lower your expenses. And that's what your home mortgage is. It's an expense. The other way to do that is raise your income. Okay, so you would in that instance you would want to save more, and but it depends on your circumstance as to which can get you there quickest, and right. which is going to have the greatest effect on your your long term income stream in retirement. That that payments a lot of, for a lot of families. That's a lot monthly expenses. Is is that mortgage? When we ask clients, uh, you know, what is your monthly budget? Um, sometimes they include it, and sometimes they don't, but. Once we go back in and calculate, it's a significant portion of their monthly expenses. So no longer having that in retirement uh, allows you, to, it frees you up a little bit in, in retirement. Because it is a fixed expense. Right. Whereas most other expenses are variable. So if you have a month where things aren't going well, you have an emergency or you know, a large cash outflow, you know, you can, you can handle that, but you can't not. Well, some, some, fixed expense. some people give us pushback immediately. They say, well, I keep my mortgage around, so I have a tax deduction. Yeah, that was uh, that's kind of old school thinking at this point in time. With the standard deduction being so high now, and which is wonderful for most people, and then you do that for a married couple where you take both. I mean, we're looking at you know, it's what is it, twelve thousand four hundred dollars per person. So for a married couple, we're looking at twenty four thousand eight hundred dollars standard deduction. So you have to have mortgage interest that gets you above that number. That, that's, a, that's a lot in interest. Then we're talking having a not, different conversation. Not only that, but let's say it was deductible. So if if, if you're going to spend $5,000 in – well, it have to be bigger than that. But let's say you're spending $25,000 in mortgage interest, you would get to deduct 
a few thousand dollars net off your tax return. So why would you spend $10,000 to save $3,000? How about just don't spend the $10,000, right? They also, and then put $7,000 in your pocket. <laughs> right, and they also uh, capped the SALT limit at 10000 So, I mean, you're really losing benefits that they were, were there previously for these big homes. So it kind of loses that that conversation. Yeah. So obviously – a reason two is to is to free up cash flow in retirement. That's less money you have to spend. Mortgage interest rates aren't deductible. Uh, I think a, a big one is psychological reasons, and and I see this in couples that we sit down with. Well, one spouse may uh, feel more conservative about things than, than another, but so many times, uh, even during this last COVID uh, sell off, um, I had to convince a lot of families several years ago to that mortgage needs to go away and this is how we're going to conquer that. And it was, it was kind of rewarding for me to get those phone calls and say, I'm so glad you told me to pay off my house because what's happening right now is crazy. And knowing that my home is paid for uh, just kind of gives me a a peace of mind um, that's really invaluable. So, um, you know, I think those are the three main reasons why you, why you do it. You know, and and I have to say guys, we're, we're in a minority. Uh, I think if you went down to any brokerage house, they have an incentive to convince you that you should not pay off your house and that you should invest more money into your brokerage account, uh, mostly because they're transaction-based companies that are going to make commission off of um, off of that. And, and even here, you know, we manage assets as a percentage of assets under management, right? So we do lose revenue when we make that recommendation, but our fiduciary duty overrides that. And I think it's in the best interest of our clients to have uh, paid off homes. To your point, like when interest rates were double digits, that would be a different conversation, but now they're two and a half percent. So that what they're saying is, you know, we can invest this in the market or basically anywhere and we're getting more than two and a half percent. So that's, that's what they're yeah. discussing. Yeah. So if, if um, you're 60, 55, you can pay off your home. Let's say it's not inside an IRA. You just can write a check or do you put that into your brokerage account? Um, I, I think I would flip that on its head and say, if your home was paid off, would you take out a mortgage and go down to Mr. Broker and invest the money? Most people would say no, right? Yeah, I think that's a good point because in a in a total household financial approach, that's effectively what they're doing. You know, they may not think of it that way, but that's what they're doing. They're borrowing money against their house to buy more investments. Yeah. That's just margin. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you should margin your place where you live. That's right. I don't know that's such a good idea. <laughs> now, there are exceptions to this. We can go uh, past the mass affluent, which is net worth of 100000 to a million. We can get into ultra high net worth, which is $10 million plus. I, th- I think ultra high net worth, um, uh, it's a different game at that point. Right, but, it's a different conversation. But for for most people, probably listening to this podcast, net worth, uh, you know, in between a million and 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 two million, um, I, I I still say your primary home is your is your paid off uh, paid off home. Don't put it at risk. Something else you have to think about is how you pay it off. So if you don't have a whole lot of free cash, but you have a retirement account that is more than large enough to cover a paid off home and your standard of living going forward, you you have to think about the tax implications. So this may be a reason not to pay it off. Um, For example, if you had a $150,000 loan at 3.75%, which if you haven't refied, that's pretty common, a 3.75% 30-year loan, um, you'd have to pay $30,000 in interest before, before that loan was ever paid off. So that's your cost of keeping it is 30 grand. And the opportunity cost on that 30 grand. Correct. Now, if you took money out of a 401k or an IRA to pay it off and you had no other income, so you're not on social security yet, you don't have pensions, it's on average out right now to be about 17% federal tax and plus your 6% state tax. So in the end, you'd have to pull out $194,000 to pay off a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, so that that would give you pause at that point to say, okay, do I still pay off my home even though it's going to cost me more in tax 
then it's saving me an interest. And you, you have to look at that closely. Interesting enough that when we run that through our financial planning software, it still has you pay off your home. It still says you have a higher probability of not running out of money before age 95 by p- still paying off the home because you're freeing up that pressure on the portfolio to have to generate that mortgage per month, whatever that is, 1500 For 30 plus. plus years. I mean, that adds up. Yeah, if it's a new mortgage. Right. Correct. So, so even then, you still might want to go pay it off because – you're going to pay income tax on any withdrawal out of that portfolio anyway. And then if you're near if you're near the year end, you could always consider taking half of the mortgage payment out in December and then half the mortgage payment out in January and you could keep that tax liability lower um, that way too. But you're going to pull that money out anyways. So I don't even know if maybe that tax equation is is even a one to even look at. Uh, but you do have to know that it'll cost you more if you pull it out of an IRA. And it depends on the situation, too, what the mortgage payment is and how much they have saved in those accounts. I mean, obviously, they don't want to withdraw 50% of their retirement accounts to pay this off. So as long as that's a, a smaller portion of their overall savings, then it's fine. True. And that's that's part of our calculations. We right. run, well, we're on two scenarios. One is paid off home and one is not paid off home. And we look at, okay, which scenario generates the most income? for uh, the most cash flow, free cash flow for the uh, retiree over their lifetime. Right. Because they still need that portfolio and that nest egg to have those withdrawals in the future to live on. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So let's let's take it a step further. Uh, let's say that um, we have to make a choice. Do I pay off my home or do I save more for retirement? Meaning that I don't have the cash to pay off my home, but I could probably throw an extra thousand dollars a month at it or five hundred dollars a month at it do I do that or do I or do I save uh, into my more into my 401k or other investments well it is an interesting question because I think a lot of people will you know take what's ever left over at the end of the month and maybe put down another hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars on their mortgage as you mentioned uh, it really has to be considered you know, over the longest term of the term of the loan itself, because if you have other smaller debts, like car loans, credit card, student loans, et cetera, the, the effect of that $100 or $200 or $1,000 on your mortgage, which will get paid off in 20 some years, versus the effect of using that same money and paying off credit card, car loan, and student loan needs to be considered. The, the, the shorter the term, the greater the effect of paying it down quickly. So if you have a credit card date, that term is one month. If you pay that off, the next month you realize that amount of money in your discretionary income the very next month. If it's a student loan, and it's a 10-year student loan, if you can pay that off faster, you realize that discretionary income in your circumstance in 10 years rather than, than 30 years. And then that money at that point in time could be used to pay off more money on the um, on the mortgage, so it's attacking you know the the debt that's going to give you the greatest effect in your de- monthly income the quickest. Yeah, that reminds me of our general philosophy. You know, we have this uh, this bucket system is what I call it, and you know, you're and it reminds, it reminds me of two things. One of our bucket system too is a silly book called Rhinoceros Like Success. It was on uh, Dave Ramsey's uh, must read list uh, several years ago. Might you try to get it. me read it a few times. Yeah, it's it's really thin. You could read it on the drive home <laughs> if you uh, had a car with uh, autopilot. Or Thanks something. for that. It's thin. You can read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't quite mean it that way, but yes, it doesn't have pictures though. Sorry, uh. <laughs> uh, but I did get a picture because of the book. I have this picture of this rhinoceros um, sitting in my office above my above my door, and and no one's ever asked why it's there. But uh, anyway, it was uh, a year before it, after working here a year before you, you finally told this story. Yes, and I never asked because like. <laughs> I'm not going to ask my boss why he has a picture of a rhinoceros <laughs> and above the door. From- <laughs> I love rhinoceroses. Um, no, it, it was, came from the book. Uh, it, it simply it reminds me as an entrepreneur that I you should never charge at more than one thing at a time, that you are your best charging at one thing. And so when it comes to these payments uh, and then our, our bucket system, number one thing is, is to be debt-free outside of your home. So 
if you're if if you're go, if you're sending an extra hundred bucks a month to the mortgage and you're sending an extra hundred bucks to the eighteen percent credit card that you have, we <laughs> you need to consolidate and send two hundred dollars to the credit card. Focus on one thing. So one, eliminate all credit card debt. Two, uh, go after car loans. Right, uh, car loans are better than they used to be, but I still see people walk through here with four or five percent car loans, which is crazy. Yeah, they're not the two and a half that we're seeing no. the mortgages. I mean, point nine. Uh, or zero percent if it's real zero percent. Sometimes zero percent they mark the car up to offer you zero percent, so it's not really zero. Um, but if it's a real zero percent and it's really you know a real point nine, didn't have to pay more. Maybe that sort of makes sense. But then after that, um, you know you have your home there. But okay, let's leave the home alone for a second. The next thing is after you, you have your debt eliminated, then you want to focus on emergency reserves. So for retirees, we always like to have at least $50,000 in reserve on the side. Um, for working families, with uh, it might be a little higher than that just because of um, uh, kids' expenses. Uh, and then from there, are we saving enough for retirement? So this is, this is to me, this is where the crossroads is uh, because – if I'm 55 or I'm 60 and I have five or six years to go or seven years to go, you've kind of lost your ability to have compounding. It's very different if you are 20 years old or 25 or 35 years old, right? So maybe taking all your resources and eliminating the mortgage is going to free up $1,500 to $2,200 a month in retirement, that is worth more than you having to save an amount to pay you $2,200 a month. And you can't guarantee the market would be up those short-term years in the near future, but you almost could if they're 10, 20 years out, that it, that would be up. So exactly. it's a little different story. Exactly. So paying off your home prior to your retirement is, is very important. Now, if you're a younger person, I like 15-year mortgages. Um, I, I look at when we refi, the cost of a 15 versus the cost of a 30 is is a huge difference, even in these lower interest rate environments. And and right now, it's only a few hundred bucks more typically to take out a, a 15 year. Uh, or of course, that varies on down payment and things like that. But the point is, um, you want it paid off prior to retirement if you're younger. So if you're 40 years old, do you send lots of extra money to pay off your home? If that's important to you for psychological reasons, that trumps anything that we're saying. But I say in this low environment, you you have 20 plus years of market performance. I'd rather see that money go to retirement. So let's do a 15 year knowing that it's going to be paid off by 65 uh, and then save extra toward uh, the 401k. I, that makes sense because you have compounding years left. If you have five years to go, you have a lot less compounding years. Uh, even a 10% rate of return per year for five years isn't going to do that much for you as far as future income in a, in your portfolio. Being able to do that, though, also depends on how much house you have. What, I mean, do you, are you over leveraged in that house? See, sometimes that people have some pretty significant payments and, you know, they technically probably shouldn't be having that house. They can't afford that house. So uh, if they're struggling with a 30, uh, 30 year, the 15 years is just not going to happen. So I think that is something good to look at and see if you can really afford the house that you're living in or looking at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's obviously, uh, if you have a significant equity in a home, um, you have to think about that in retirement as well. So maybe, maybe I need to sell and take the cash and, and pay cash for something so that I don't have a mortgage payment. Uh, and that, that might change the scenario a little bit. If there's already equity, then maybe I go and save. So, you know, we're trying to give, um, general advice to the, to the masses here. So I think I will remind everyone that everybody that comes into our firm is, has a unique situation. I wouldn't say everyone's exactly the same. Yes. The, uh, the old advice, you know, of years ago for parents, our parents and grandparents is just simply not applicable in today's world. Rates are changing, markets are changing, circumstances are changing at a much faster rate. And I think you mentioned something earlier is that, you know, you, you use the situation that you know now and you make a decision based upon that. Right now, the, the, the world of interest rates, if I can call it that, has given us a gift, has given all of us as consumers a gift, but also as us as planners, it gives us greater flexibility in setting up a long-term plan trying to maximize the use of these low, low interest rates. It gives us the opportunity to present different options. So there might be someone listening who can't pay off their home at all. They, they have no way of doing that. They don't have enough um, retirement savings. They don't have 
uh, they could have a pension, I guess, um, but they can't pay off the home. Uh, so that's when we have to kind of punt and say, okay, we're not going to be able to achieve this goal, um, but it's okay. We can still do uh, another option, which is take advantage of these low rates, look at a 30-year mortgage and try to get the holding costs of that house uh, as cheap as possible. So you can stay in the home. Um, obviously, it's with a mortgage, but then we make sure we have enough cash reserve to to cover that mortgage should should uh, something happen. Um, so that that is a uh, uh, I guess kind of a your your plan B um, if you can't get there before retirement. Um, another thing too, I think we should talk about is second and third homes. So you know my philosophy on this is well, let's get let's get home base paid off. So our primary home should be should be paid off, but second and third homes, you, you have some great opportunities, especially if you're generating income with them. So if you're doing an Airbnb, if you're doing a, a VRBO, or if you just turn it over to an association for rental, um, you have an opportunity to to potentially get that anywhere from you know two and a quarter. Uh, if if it's a true investment home, the rates are I think around four percent right now, but even at four percent. You're you're probably still on the positive side, or or someone else is paying the mortgage for you. If it's, and I'm not talking about necessarily a rental property, but a vacation property, one that you're using also, but renting renting out to others when you're not there. I think that's some you know great price appreciation. We've seen that already. There's probably still some more upside there. I would think uh, in the long term, um, you know, lake, beaches, mountains, all those things uh, people seem to want these days, but. Um, I don't know that those have to be paid off. I think if they were paid off and you're young, young enough, you're probably losing some opportunity elsewhere. It's not affecting your cash flows because it's not technically coming out of your pocket. You're you're allowing somebody else to help you pay for that mortgage. That, that's helpful. But you do have to cover it in case you know we see COVID and no one can go anywhere. Right. But then the flip side of COVID was everybody said, screw it, I'm going somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> and the bookings went through the roof, right? So- yeah, but you have to make sure that you can cover it if for some reason you can't rent. Um, I know like in Asheville area, I know up in Highlands, North Carolina area, there's actually talk of um, banning Airbnb rentals uh, simply because um, the locals don't like all the extra traffic. Uh, whether that wins or not, I, I don't know. But if, if something like that were to happen, you have to make sure that, that you can still cover that mortgage without a whole lot of risk. And again, uh, I think everything we've talked about today, we have to think about in in different stages. So, mass for mass affluence, um, hundred thousand to a million dollar net worth. Uh, uh, then the next level from a million uh, all the way up to five million. Y- your primary home. I would I would I would encourage you to make sure do the math. Make sure that's paid off before retirement. And if you're looking for way uh, a calculator to pay off. Your mortgage. Dave Ramsey has a great one on his website. You can go to DaveRamsey.com, look under calculators, and there's an early mortgage payoff calculator. We actually use that here quite a bit uh, with clients in the office. Um, gives you a great idea of how much how much you're saving by getting that mortgage paid off sooner. Uh, also, we're always available here for resources. Uh, if you need some financial planning, uh, we're happy to help uh, with that as well. All right, guys, enjoyed the conversation today, and we'll see you next week. Great. Thank you. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.